How you doing guys? Welcome to another episode. This is still topic 5, energetics, thermochemistry, and in this one we talk about delta HC, delta HF. Let's go. Alright, topic 5.1, what is delta HC and what is delta HF? We talk about enthalpy of combustion, enthalpy of formation, and we look at some definitions and some calculations. Now the IB understanding, well this one actually falls under a guidance point and you need to know about delta HC and delta HF, so that's what we're doing. So the standard enthalpy of formation, delta HF, it's basically a reference point where we can compare all the enthalpies um, to a standard point. The definition is important. The change of formation is defined as the enthalpy change that results when one mole of a compound is formed from its elements at standard temperature and pressure. Just make sure that you remember that water is a liquid at standard temperature and pressure. So if we wanted to write the, the delta H formation equation for methane, we actually start with methane, CH4, and then we've got to think, okay, one mole of methane, what's that formed from? It's formed from one mole of carbon, solid, plus four moles of hydrogen. Now hydrogen comes as H2, so we need two moles of H2 gas because that's its standard state. Now the delta HF, I could look that up in the data book and it would tell me that in that process we release negative 74 kilojoules per mole. If I wanted to do the same thing for hydrogen chloride, I start by forming one mole of hydrogen chloride. Now what's that formed from? Well it's formed from one mole of hydrogen, but hydrogen comes as H2, so I only need a half. I need one mole of chlorine, but the same thing, chlorine comes as a diatomic molecule, so I only need half of chlorine gas. In that process, the delta HF, if I look up the data from the data booklet, it says that minus 92.3 kilojoules per mole is emitted. So that means it releases energy. Just by, conven by convention, any delta H formation of an element is zero. So the delta H formation of an element in its most stable state will always be zero. And that's really important for oxygen, especially when we do delta HC. So the standard enthalpy of formation, where can you find this information? You can find it in the data book, table 12, where it lists the formula of the compound, it lists its state at standard temperature and pressure, and it also lists if the formation is exo or endothermic. So here's an ex another example. Write an equation including state symbols for the delta H formation of phenol. So phenol is a chemical that contains a benzene ring and then a hydroxy functional group, C6H5OH, and it's a solid at room temperature. So we need to form one mole of phenol from its elements. So we have phenol as our product, C6H5OH. Now how many moles of carbon do I need? Well I need six moles of carbon, so I have six carbon solid. I need six moles of hydrogen, but hydrogen comes as a diatomic molecule, so I have three moles of H2 gas. And now I only need one mole of oxygen, so I have a half a mole of O2 gas. Again, using the table, we can see that the delta H formation is negative 165 kilojoules per mole, and that is an exothermic reaction. So the enthalpy change of combustion, delta HC, is how much energy is released when a compound undergoes complete combustion, burnt in oxygen, and it's when one mole of that compound is completely burnt. So one mole of the compound, burnt in oxygen, releases this much energy. So if we have methane, CH4 plus O2 goes to CO2 plus H2O. Remember to balance this up, we can use the little saying of CHOD, balance for carbon, balance for hydrogen, balance for oxygen, and then D for double. And by going through and balancing in that way, we've written the combustion reaction. One mole of methane will release 819 kilojoules. It's a per one mole ratio. So the same for ethane. If I have a look at ethane, C2H6, that would be a gas. I can check that using the table plus O2 because it's burnt in oxygen, will produce carbon dioxide and water. Again, we've got a balance for the carbon dioxide and water, so we can follow the little saying of CHOD, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and then D for double if we need to. But because this is a one mole ratio, when we go to balance for oxygen, we can actually have a fraction. So our oxygen's on the right hand side is actually seven. But because this is a per mole ratio, we don't want to do the doubling. So we say that we have 7 over 2 oxygens, which keeps it as a 1 mole ratio between ethane and the amount of energy released. 
So one mole of ethane releases 1,561 kilojoules. Now if I'm asked to write the thermochemical equation, the thermochemical equation will not contain any fractions. So what I need to do here is apply D for double in the Chodd balancing system by doubling everything which would remove that fraction. If I double everything in the equation though, I've got to double the delta H. So the delta H of the thermochemical equation would be doubled because we don't want to have a fraction in front of our oxygen. The delta H of combustion and what comes from the table is a per mole ratio. And if they ask you to write the thermochemical equation, there's just that one extra step. Okay, topic 5.1, some top tips for delta HC and delta HF. Make sure you refer to the data book and remember that water is a liquid at 298K. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.